No, 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 because the thing about it, Drake wouldn't be Drake if we made that decision. Uh, Drake wanted to sign to me in a time where I wasn't even Trey Songz yet. Like, we had arguments about Drake wanting, like, you can't sign to me. Like, at that time, I felt like uh, me and my label weren't even in a good place where as though they fully believed in my potential. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, and I took Drake to many executives, and uh, a lot of people said no. Wow. Mm. Like, I had to fight to get Replacement Girl on BT 106 of Park. Like, so... Just to see him become what he is, it's just, it's dope. It's just probably just reassuring that I believed in something that much. And it was, cause that's the first artist I ever wanted to do anything with as far as sign or, mm -hmm. like, or give that much of mm -hmm. my shine to. How did you stumble across that? that? Cause that seemed like it, that was even before So Far Gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was around that, that time, yeah. No, me and Drake started, no, it was before that. Really? It was two years before that. Uh, Drake, I met Drake in a, uh, he came, I was living with my manager at the time, Delante. And Drake sought me out. He wanted to do a record with me. He sent me the record. I liked the record. And he was actually singing in the hook. And it was the first time I actually heard somebody singing and rapping. And I was a person that was trying to do that at the time. Like, people don't even remember. This is before Wonder Woman when Drake was actually in the Wonder Woman video. Mm -hmm. uh, but he came to Atlanta to get the record done. Uh, I think he gave me like $10,000, $15,000. Wow. Like, I met, like, he came to... I was recording <coughs> a, on an inbox on a laptop like this in a in an unfinished basement. People ain't gonna believe, man. They ain't gonna believe, man. I'm trying to think what the first Trey Song song I heard. Trey Song song. I don't even remember. I remember this nigga. He was on, uh, what was the show on MTV? They used to go to like people's neighborhoods. It wasn't Cribs, man. It was like where I'm from. And he was the first dude from like Virginia. Cause they had did like Timberland and Missy. And I think they did Genuine. And they would always have a young person on there. And Trey Songs was on there. I remember because me and him the same age, like, damn, I think he was like probably 16, 17. I'm like, damn, they got somebody my age on there. MTV had a bunch of random ass shows in the 2000s. Like, they need to bring a lot of them shits back now, though, because the TV on now is trash as fuck. My ducks, my swans, welcome to the pod. My name is Dorian from GroupA2Music.com, and right here, we got Trey Songz talking about how he had to fight to get Drake on 106 and Park. It's crazy to even think that. Drake's the biggest artist in the world, one of the biggest of all time. And the fact that somebody had to actually fight to get the song they did together on 106 and Park is crazy. I wanted y'all to pay attention to a couple things in this story. First of all, Drake was able to give Trey Songz $15,000 as an independent artist to be on the song and to film the video, do all that. So that kind of gives you insight to what kind of independent artist that Drake actually was, where he had the funds to be able to do something like that is number one. Number two, people aren't gonna believe, man. There are record execs that turn down Drake. Like, what record exec in their right mind would turn him down, right? You're not believing in the rapping, you're not believing in the singing, you're not believing in the image. Even when Jazz Prince played Drake for Wayne the first time, Wayne said, turn that shit off, don't ever play it for me again. Wayne didn't believe. And now look at Drake. Like, anything he drops turns into gold. People are not gonna believe in you. They're not gonna believe in that you can be an artist, especially people in your hometown. They're not gonna believe someone who they grew up with, who they fought, they hooped with, they laughed with, they cried with, they drank with, they smoked with. People the opposite sex, the people that they fucked can blow up and become a global superstar. They can't fathom that. They can't fathom the fact that they can even be the district manager at their Papa John's job. How can they fathom that you're gonna be a global rap superstar? They're gonna talk shit about you. They're gonna hold you back. It happens every step in the way. This industry is all clout. That's all people are focused on. Inside of the industry, outside where I exist in the independent artist realm, we don't give a fuck about that. We care about our fans. But inside the music business, the music industry, it's all clout. None of those label execs could see that because at the time, this is 07. This is T.I., this is Jeezy, this is Kanye, this is Ludacris Sum, this is Jay-Z, this is Nas. Drake didn't fit that mold. Maybe Kanye a little bit, but he didn't really fit that mold. Definitely on some singing shit. What nobody trying to hear that? They were clout chasing. They were looking for the next one of those dudes out his name. Drake made his own sound, made his own lane, and boom, he's out of there. You gotta believe in who you are. You gotta understand these people are not gonna see what you see. They're gonna be blind to your vision. Stop expecting them to see it. People didn't see my vision with Group A2 Music. They don't see my vision with Group A2 Media. They don't see my vision with Dorian as an artist. They didn't see the vision with True Support. And we charted number three and number seven on iTunes. They don't see it. Billboard didn't see it. Billboard still doesn't see it. Billboard's trying to suppress me. They tried. They don't see it. Fuck them. You can't lean on that. T.I. has one of the best lines I have heard about people trying to make it in music. 
If you live for the cheers, you will die by the booze. Fuck all that shit, man. You need to focus on your fans. That's what you need to focus on. You don't need to focus on 106 in Park or the radio station or Billboard or the Grammys or some record label or some A&R or some festival. You focus on your fans and you reach them every day through social media. You give them content they can engage with every day on social media. You respond to comments. You respond to DMs. You give them everything they need on social media. And I promise you they will return the favor. That's what my fans did for me on True Support. And they're going to continue to do it. Because I'm a real nigga. I'm not like these fake motherfuckers on here who say they doing shit and they're not. I got all the data and all the proof to back it. If you somebody that's real and you want to continue to connect with your fans and you don't want to deal with this industry bullshit, you're on Instagram, click that link in the bio. You're on YouTube, click that link in the description box. And purchase one of our packages for 60% off right now. I'm out the pod. Y'all stay true. Vamos a salir de aquí, te quiero mucho papi, vamos a salir de aquí, te quiero mucho papi, yeah, el estilo,